Hi, I'm Jennifer Hancock. I am a humanist, author of several books, and founder of Humanist Learning Systems. And today I want to talk to you about balance. Everything requires it. All right. Your actions have consequences, so you really should choose your actions wisely. And the problem is related to how we conceive of our ethics. And, you know, a lot of times people think, well, if, if a little bit of something is good, a lot of it is good. And the reality is that's not really how ethics works. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments have Ten Commandments. And, you know, even if you agree with them, and most people do, um, you still sometimes have to ask yourself, okay, uh, is it ethical to steal a car to prevent a murder? Right? Sometimes you have to balance these values against themselves. And so today I want to talk to you about how we achieve balance because it's not just about ethics that matter there's other things as well um, pretty much everyone in the US at some point has struggled with work-life balance for instance <clears throat> you know we all we live in a society where we have to have money in order to have housing and food and shelter and health care so you have to work and plus, work helps you feel like you're part of the community. It gives meaning and purpose to your life, unless, of course, you totally hate your job. On the other hand, you're doing all that so that you can have a life, so that you can live, all right? And most of us are lucky enough to have friends and family members, and there's things we like to do. Maybe we have hobbies that we never have time for. Um, even if all you want to do is sit around and watch Indian movies like me, <laughs> like if I had my druthers, that's all I would do all day is sit around and watch Indian movies and eat popcorn and maybe go for a walk in the park. Um, you still have things you want to do. And my dad always said, you know, work gets in the way of having a life and you need both. And so the challenge becomes, well, how do you balance work and life? All right. So that you get both. And the answer is to consciously decide to balance them. And you have to kind of reassess every three months, six months when you get out of balance. I do this every six months. I look at my work schedule and how I'm working and whether or not I'm happy with my work-life balance. Because if I don't, I will get out of balance very quickly because I'm self-employed. I'm a solopreneur. I do all this myself. It's very easy. I love what I do. It's very easy for me to dive in and not resurface, right? But that doesn't help me or keep me happy. It doesn't make my child happy who would like to see me from time to time and to do things with me. It doesn't make my husband happy. In order to have that work-life balance, I have to choose to have that work-life balance, which means I have to value my life as much as I value my work. All right, so this has to be conscious to create that balance of it and to rebalance when things get out of balance. Because if you're like, if you've ever played that, but those balance games on the Wii, you, it's constant. You have to constantly readjust. And it's the same thing with your work life balance. Another area where people struggle is in their ideals and the pragmatism. I'm, I consider myself a realist with liberal ideals, meaning I'm pragmatic. My ideals are liberal, I have ideals, but I'm aware that in order to get those ideals into reality, I have to pragmatically work at them, right? And so we're constantly struggling between what we would ideally like to see and what is realistic to achieve, right? And our ideals should be high, and realistically we may be down here, right? And so how do we balance our ideals against the pragmatism? We see this in politics all the time is, you know, this person's not pure enough for me really? <laughs> okay, but maybe you could take baby steps to get to where you want to go. And I understand the frustration with that, but that's the balance. And so everybody has to decide where that balance is going to be. Because if you don't, you're going to find yourself not accomplishing anything. Most people with really strict ideals don't actually accomplish all that much because they're so busy being pure that they're not getting anything done. And the people who are totally pragmatic do things that violate everybody's values all the time. So the challenge is how do we balance our idealism with the pragmatism required to get things done? And here's how I say to do it. You don't lose track of your values. You integrate your values into your decision making. But ultimately you understand that 
you're never going to get anything perfect. Um, you know, when I said before, I say this all the time, that, you know, there's the ideal and then there's the reality, right? And even if you agree with the value system, you still have to play one against the other. And I'm going to go back to, is it okay to steal a car to save a life? And most people answer that question, yes. All right, but the reality is in order to answer that yes, you have to balance two ideals, both of which are good, not stealing, <clears throat> not killing, and then find a pragmatic balance to achieve the best good with the least amount of harm. And that's why stealing a car to save a life is generally considered moral because we're going to do the most good and the least harm. And that's where the pragmatism comes in, is the willingness to balance those and not be stuck on, I can't steal a car, I can't steal a car, I can't steal a car, and then the person dies. All right. The pragmatist is going to say, I value both of these things, but I value one a little bit higher and I'm going to do the most good and the least harm that I can do. That's where the pragmatism comes in. It's not an abandonment of the ideals. It's an integration of the ideals in a pragmatic way, if that makes sense. One of my favorite quotes about balance is by Blaise Pascal. He says, a man does not show his greatness by being at one extremity, but rather by touching both at once. You don't, you know, idealism is a very, it's a very difficult thing, right? Because people hold ideals for good reasons, but when those ideals become dogmatic, meaning they're not flexible and you're not allowed to question them and you're not allowed to introduce pragmatism into the ideal, then you're at an extreme. And if you're at an extreme, you're probably causing harm, all right? Greatness is touching both extremes at once and integrating them. That's about balance. Everything requires it. If you want to learn more, I have courses where we talk explicitly about humanist values and about humanist principles over at humanistlearning.com. You can get any of my books. Uh, the, the Jen Hancock's Handy Humanism Handbook is a really great starter on the philosophy. But if you're interested in, like, how do I apply this in the world of business, right, where we have the need to make money to pay salaries, which is a good, right, hiring people, putting people to work, helping them feed their families, that's all morally good. How do we balance that? with some of the other ideals we might have about human relationships. You know, how do we, how do we manage people in a respectful way um, but still get the work done? These are balance questions, right? Um, how do we not exploit our workers? Balance questions. <laughs> like, we need them to work, but we don't want to exploit them. And, you know, I was in China when it was first coming out of, you know, communist rule, and you couldn't ask people <laughs> to serve you and serve you. You couldn't ask a waiter to bring you water because that was considered exploitative. There has to be a balance, right? So what I encourage you to do is take my course, Principles of Humanistic Management, where I talk about all the principles of humanism, the values of humanism, responsibility, compassion, ethical decision-making, things like that. And we talk about it in the context of what it means to be a good manager. And it'll help you understand you know, how to strike that balance between the needs of the organization you're in and the needs of the employee and to be respectful to both sides so that it all works. All right. See you there.